Secretary Zinke denies involvement in a $300 million Puerto Rico contract. The first charges are filed in the Russian investigation. Police officers searching for common ground during coffee with a cop. Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on KPAX, Montana's news leader. Good evening, I'm Kent Lutzen. Yesterday, the White House denied that political connections led to a questionable contract to restore electricity in Puerto Rico. A multi-million dollar contract was awarded to a tiny electrical company in Whitefish, hometown of Montana's former congressman and now the Interior Secretary, Ryan Zinke. In a statement, Zinke said he had absolutely nothing to do with the contract. CBS News correspondent David Begno has more on this story. We found the headquarters in a remote, affluent area nestled in the mountains of northwestern Montana. It's not overstating it to say it's in the middle of nowhere. The headquarters turns out to be a two-bedroom, two-bath house that's owned by the CEO of Whitefish Energy. According to real estate records online, the house was up for sale, but it was taken off the market two days after Hurricane Maria made landfall in Puerto Rico. We found the headquarters in rural Montana, but it appears to be a private residence. Who are you looking for? Um, Andy Techmensky. I know the mail in front of the house says his name. It says Whitefish Energy Holdings here. It says Whitefish Energy Holdings. Okay, thank you, sir. Whitefish Energy secured a $300 million contract with PREPA. That's the Puerto Rico Power Authority. Now, the CEO of Whitefish is a man named Andy Techmansky. Hi, I'm Andy Techmansky. His company's been around for two years, and at the time the hurricane made landfall in Puerto Rico, Whitefish only had about two employees. They've since hired about 300 people to do work for them in Puerto Rico. Notable is that the U.S. Secretary of the Interior, Ryan Zinke, is from Whitefish, Montana. In fact, he and the CEO of Whitefish Energy know each other. That's according to the Associated Press, which reports the secretary's son at one time had a summer work job with Whitefish Energy. Now, the secretary insists he had absolutely nothing to do, those are his words, with a $300 million contract going to a small business in his hometown. Kent. Now, it's been 38 days since Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico, and crews are working on getting power back, as the island only has 28% power generation. Switching gears to weather now, it was a beautiful sunny day this afternoon, but that's predicted to change. Looks like we could get some heavy winds. Let's go to our Storm Tracker Weather Center with meteorologist Russ Thomas for more. Russ? Yeah, thank you. You're right on both counts. It was a beautiful day across western Montana. Talking about sunshine pouring down, take a look at this. This is our first Security Bank eye cam shot in the Bitterroot Valley. There it is right there, but right before we sit, right before the sunset, I should say we caught this and again, very nice. Now here's what we've got for you. Look at our St. Patrick Hospital eye cam or St. Joseph Medical Center eye cam. You do see an evening that is shaping up to be very nice as well. Uh, Lake wind advisor in effect for Flathead Lake and this is for tomorrow, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, winds up to 40 miles per hour. We'll have more on that coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Russ. A Missoula man exonerated on a 15-year-old rape charge has been released from jail after an arrest of an unrelated charge. Cody Marble tells MTN News he expects it will be his last time he'll see the inside of a cell. Marble was released from prison more than a year ago after prosecutors said a 2002 rape charge was invalid and should be dismissed. But he was arrested again this fall, accused of violating probation from a 2013, dr 2013 drug sentence. On Thursday, state judge in Missoula said Marble can be on a conditional release for another 209 days. The 33-year-old Marble told MTN News Friday that he'd hoped his drug sentence would be erased entirely, so he'd be free of any state supervision. But he says the conditional release is the next best thing, and that he's looking forward to moving on with his life as a free man. Marble says he plans to live and work in Missoula. Black and blue streamers were decorated across the front of the Starbucks on Brook Street in Missoula earlier today as people gathered for coffee with a cup. After a busy day, law enforcement arrived and were greeted by smiling employee, employees and community members. As far as uh, being a law enforcement officer in our community, we find that this community especially is very, very supportive of its law enforcement. Officers were given different coffees to try and members of the community were given the unique opportunity to speak with them one-on-one. -on -one. Coffee with a cop events bring residents and police together to discuss relevant issues and find common ground. We're members of this community too and it's, it's really important to, to be able to be involved and to have things like this to, to be part of the community and to show the community members that we really do care about what we're doing. Leonard said that events like these are a great opportunity to show the people that officers are just like them. 
In Great Falls, the Montana Veterans Memorial added more than 100 new tiles to the memorial this morning. The group adds tiles twice a year, once before Memorial Day and another before Veterans Day. 33 of the new tiles added today represent Blackfeet warriors. On Veterans Day, members from various eras of our country's military history will be commemorated. This year's guest speaker will be Anthony Aretz, the president of the University of Providence. The event will take place November 11th at 11 a.m. Since 2016, the Missoula Downtown Foundation has made more than $26,000 from selling retired parking meters. The money made is going towards improvements in the downtown area. The meters were removed in 2015, and many people have been interested in buying a part of Missoula history. There are 120 double-headed meters left to sell, and this will be the last chance to purchase one. They are running at one for $75 and two for $100. The Missoula Downtown Foundation um, is working really hard to help keep our downtown as vibrant and wonderful as everybody thinks it is, and this project helps support that. If you're interested in purchasing a piece of Missoula history, you can visit the Missoula Downtown Foundation's office next time, um, pardon me, office anytime within the next two weeks. In national news, there's intense speculation tonight after it was revealed yesterday that a grand jury has agreed on criminal charges in connection with special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation. No one knows right now who's charged and what they're accused of because the indictment was sealed. CBS News correspondent Wendy Gillette has more on what we do know from New York. CBS News has confirmed the federal grand jury hearing evidence pertaining to special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation has approved the first criminal charges. Mueller is investigating alleged meddling by Russia in the 2016 U.S. presidential election and whether anyone connected to the Trump administration colluded with the Russian government. A federal judge ordered the indictment to be sealed. What I suspect, uh, given that the investigation appears to be ongoing, is that Mueller has decided to indict certain individuals in the hope that they will, what we call flip. In other words, that they'll agree to cooperate with the investigation. Renato Mariotti says the most obvious potential targets are former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn and President Trump's former campaign manager, Paul Manafort, whose Virginia home was raided by the FBI in July. President Trump has denied any wrongdoing and has called the investigation a witch hunt. Russia has also denied the allegations that it interfered in the election. Former Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski downplayed the significance of the charges Saturday on Fox News Channel. The speculation is so insane right now. What we should be focusing on are the continued lies of the Clinton administration, the continued fallacies that they perpetuate. The indictment is expected to become public as early as Monday, when whoever is facing charges could be taken into custody. Wendy Gillette, CBS News. CNN was the first organization to report the news Friday night. Mueller was appointed to his post in May, a week after President Trump fired former FBI Director James Comey. Now back in Missoula, this year's two-day Rocky Horror Picture Show wrapped up tonight at the Wilma. This was the sixth year it was performed live for a public audience. Cast and crew in this year's play, like in many years prior, relied on their instincts and their ability to adapt in the days leading up to the event feels like a piece of guerrilla theater that in a lot of respects is very thrown together. Uh, we depend a lot on volunteers and extra people putting in a ton of extra time um, to put it all together. Uh, and so it just it's just been such a treat to watch that all come together. Under new direction, this year's production unveiled new and more intricate set pieces. This year's show was written and directed more towards humor than in the past and aimed to be a more traditional version of the original production. They maintained the same edginess and themes by encouraging the audience to embrace all sides of their personality. There is a lot of strangeness and weirdness around us in the world, and I think it's important that we learn to accept it, uh, not only in others around us and in the world around us, but also within ourselves. Our reporters covering the event said that by 7 o'clock there was a line that wrapped all the way around the block. Now coming up after the break, we could be seeing some strong winds in certain parts of western Montana. More on weather up next, plus thousands of Montanans gathered for Boo at the Zoo, breaking a record. The story coming up next. 